Well, hey everybody, happy Friday, and welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and this week, I wanna have a discussion about the discourse on dwarves. We can scrutinize the statements made about super dwarves. I'd like to chew the fat as we get down to the brass tacks about the back fence talks regarding temperament. I wanna answer the question, are dwarf and super dwarf reticulated pythons flightier than any other reticulated python? be honest and upfront with you guys, I happen to find this particular discussion about dwarf and super dwarves really funny. Um, it's super ironic to me because more often than not, the source of people saying that super dwarves are flighty or terrible or mean or bitey are the keepers of bigger reticulated pythons. Now, the reason I find it's funny, and maybe this is just me being old school, but when I started to keep reticulated pythons flighty and mean and terrible and aggressive, all these terms that mainland retic keepers used to describe super dwarves were the exact same terms used to describe mainland retics, which by the way, we should probably define because I've heard the term flighty used to describe an animal that just has a high activity level you know and I think this comes from the perspective that so many more people have experience with ball pythons and they think that's typical of snakes when really ball pythons are pretty unique in the snake world there aren't a lot of animals that curl up and hide in the middle of a ball while you do whatever you want to them most of them crawl and move around that's not the flightiness we're talking about the flightiness we're talking about is an animal that lunges at you, mouth open, turns around, and pees all over on the way out so that you back up, get sprayed in the face, and by the time you've wiped all that feces out of your eyes, it's gone. Great defense mechanism. I don't know if these guys have not been keeping them long enough to remember that, but the species as a whole, when you're dealing with wild-caught animals, is not the easiest species to deal with. They are large, athletic, semi-arboreal, incredibly lean and strong, and that all adds up to an animal that can be quite a handful. But what we've seen in reticulated pythons nowadays, the mainland guys that we're more familiar with, being six, seven, eight, 15 generations away from wild caught is that all of those things have gone away because they are now very acclimated to dealing with human beings. So automatically after two and three and four generations, the species temperaments begin to become refined. So I think a lot of the rumors that go around are from people who are used to working with six, 10th generation captive bred reticulated pythons, then they decide, hey, maybe I'll diversify and get into super dwarf reticulated pythons. So they get one and it's either wild caught or maybe a first generation animal and they are just not used to that at all. So they begin to say things that used to be said about the very animals they are working with now. And all these rumors that started based on mainland retic breeders limited experience with super dwarfs, the rumors themselves have actually lasted longer than any of the wild caught tendencies of the animals. And that's why you hear so many conflicting reports. The people who are passionate about super dwarves and have a lot of them say, no, they're great. And the people that haven't worked with them multiple generations think they must be terrible. But don't take my word for it. Why don't we just go meet a few for ourselves and you can tell me 
the difference that you see. Come on. Okay, I figure it's probably easier if we just go straight to the source. This is actually a wild caught super dwarf female from what's considered to be the smallest locality of super dwarves there are. Come here, baby. Try to tap train her, she don't like that. Try to do this, she don't like that. Try to do that, she don't like that. But all in all, she's not too bad. You can see she's pretty jumpy. Pretty little girl though. A little more than anything, what they do is they stiffen up like a board and they just kind of take off, you know? That might be where a lot of it comes from. Whoa, here we go. That's flighty. Okay, now can you imagine doing that with like, okay, honey, okay. With like a full-size reticulated python? It would be insane. You guys want to see some babies? All right, we might as well start here. Pure Kalatoa. So this is a pure locality super dwarf. Second generation from Wildcott. That is, her grandparents were imported. Now she's certainly active, cruising around. Not biting, not musking, not spraying everywhere. Pure Kalatoa. Here we have a pure Kiowati from wild caught parents. Now you can see she's very active. This is a captive bred animal whose parents were wild caught. So, not much of that domestication process has happened. And she wants to know what's up. Why is a human holding her? She's not super calm. Certainly wouldn't call her flighty. She just crawls, moves. Not trying to bite me, not trying to spray or musk. I don't know. Maybe some people call this flighty. I don't think it is. This one is a dwarf. Jampea, 50% Anery Super Tiger. Very cool animal. It's actually from a Parthenogenesis clutch, which means she is a kind of a half clone of her mother. So there's your Jampea bloodline. Still young. Hasn't had much handling. I think she'll continue to get better in time. Plenty easy enough to work with though. Here's a super dwarf anery tiger from the white diamond clutch. You can see that crazy pattern that she has. So this is 50% Kalatoa and there's 12.5% Jampea in there as well. Also active. This one here, pretty, pretty much your typical super dwarf cross. This is just a normal Nicely bred, half super dwarf, 12.5% Jampea. These are many generations captive bred now. Been selectively breeding them for quite a while. And you can see they're pretty chill. This is one of the first super dwarf mochinos in the world. This one's a tiger. She's a little over a year old. Again, quite a few generations in on these. Start to get some of these cooler color combinations in the smaller size. Now here's a dwarf super dwarf cross, Anery Motley Super Tiger. So this one has Kalatoa, Jampea, and Selear Island. Again, active animal, super curious. I wouldn't say flighty, but I guess it depends on how you define it. If an animal moving is considered uh, flighty to you, then I suppose this is flighty. Here's a very nice small bloodline, 50% Kalatoa marble. That is almost two years old. And she's gonna be a little extra nervous handling today because she's going in the shed. You can see fairly, fairly typical of the behavior on these guys. Active, curious. You see that tongue flicking, exploring everything, wondering what the heck is going on. Certainly not defensive at all. Here's a bloodline that has really not been refined. This is a, a cutting edge project, but this is a 50% Selear, 25% Jampea, Platinum Head Annery. This animal is not completely trusting of people. Might pee on ya. He's not very inclined to bite. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what happens with this color intensifying Slayer blood over the next couple of generations. These are animals that very few people are working with, and I would definitely love to see more of in the future. Here's another pure super dwarf, but this time, Madu bloodline. 75% Madu and 25% Kalatoa. So pure super dwarf from two different island localities. Very active, doesn't seem to be too defensive. Pretty easy to work with. 
especially at the small size. This animal is a year old now. We get into some older stuff, higher percentage stuff too as well. This is an 87.5% Kalatoa Annery and she will be three years old in the spring. So she's going to make a, a great breeder in another year or two. Still acts very much like the juveniles. Active, moves around. This one's been with me for a while so she's much less defensive than a hatchling will be because a hatchling thinks everything is going to eat her and even though she's so tiny she's like the big dog on campus where she would come from. And here's one I'm very excited about. 75% Superdor from Madu and Kalatoa Bloodlines. It's a female phantom. This is the only female phantom with that high a percentage in the world to date. We're going to try to work this into even higher percentages. But even as it is, this girl is 10 months old. You can really see that Madu brightens the pattern up quite a bit. Even with a dark gene like Phantom. Now, this is the worst tempered animal that I have right now. This is a 50% Slayer Tiger Head Albino. You can see the beautiful pattern from that Slayer. It really means she has some cool projects ahead of her. You know, when I first pulled this animal out, just pet her on the head with that hook, let her know it's okay. And then once you get them in hand, just goes right into the same kind of behavior as any of the others. Well, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed getting to meet a few of these animals face to face and really see for yourselves. If you'd like to learn more about them, be sure to subscribe because we've got a lot more coming and you may want to look back on the 90 plus videos surrounding these animals that we've done here on Reach Out Reptiles. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great weekend and we'll catch you next time.